All right. Here we go. We've got the mid-season break now, everyone. I thought I'd sit down with you, grab myself a beer, grab one at home if you're following along, or whatever your tipple is. Grab a coffee. No, don't grab a coffee. <laughs> grab a beer. And go over with you the MotoGP rider power rankings as of the mid-season break 2022. Now, if you follow me over on Twitter, these power rankings go up race by race. I update them after every Grand Prix, and I thought, now that we've hit the halfway point, or just over halfway point in the season, I sit down and go through where we're at at this point and give a bit of an explanation as to how we got here. Now, the power rankings are based on form and championship position, and I basically just go with my gut from there. So grab your drink. Chin chin. Actually, it's not so early for this, is it? 11.59... 12. There we go. Just kidding. I'm not really like that. It's it's 9 a.m. So let's begin. At number 10, this has been a rider that I've found it quite difficult to gauge and place in my top 10. Has been higher until this point. It's Inea Bastianini. Now the thing with Inea is, yeah, three Grand Prix wins. I kind of did want to keep him higher than this but just the lack of results outside those three wins is remarkable it actually is remarkable and look fair play to him win it or finish 10th i guess is his philosophy and i get it he's on the old bike so maybe he is being more impressive than i'm giving him credit for yeah consistency is just not there for me at the moment so still in the top 10 i couldn't dream of taking out a guy with three race wins for the year from my top 10 so he'll stay in there look if he sorts the consistency out he'll be back up he was as high as did i have him on top at one point i can't remember at the end i'm gonna go through there's i'm, I'm gonna just play through every round and where everyone was each round that'll be a little graphic i do at the end there for you so just stay tuned for that or just skip to that if you're not interested in hearing me talk shit i'll i'll, I'll put a time code in for you but like just hang around hang around because you know we're enjoying ourselves we're taking our time here on to number nine and ahead of bastianini and look not much to say about zarko consistent 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 no race win though which is why i'm a little bit conflicted about having him ahead of bastianini but he's ahead of him in the championship and his form generally without a race win has been better so I do have him above Bastianini there. It's still all Ducati as we go up to number eight. And from outside of the top 10 this week, up to number eight, with a win in Assen, is Peko the boy Banyaya. Up an undisclosed amount of positions here, as you can see by my little graphic there. Really nice win in Assen. Really nice, I think controlled the race. I mean, a lot of people saying, you know, with Aleish, would Aleish have had a chance to win that if he didn't get taken out? Perhaps, I think it was winning that race either way. Really nice ride, really nice performance. Again, the inconsistencies here are bad, but he's recovering. He's showing signs that he's going to be there or thereabouts the whole second half of the season. I think it's going to be like last season where he had a really strong finish of the season. I think he's going to do that again. Yeah, I think he'll come hard in the second half of the season. Yeah. We'll see last year's Peko back again. Switching classes now. We've got up to number seven. We're up to the Moto2 boys. We've got a Moto2 boy here. Number seven is Japan's own Ayagura. Now, I've been quite impressed with Ayagura. He's picked up a race win this season and generally very consistent without being spectacular. His championship position here and his proximity to the front of the championship is what has him high on this list. Yeah, but also very unexciting. <laughs> it's not much to say about him. He's just been there and thereabouts. He's plugging away. He's doing his thing. He obviously has his head screwed on right. He knows what he needs to do to win the championship. He's not winning it or binning it. He's deciding that he'd rather just come like here, take his points, knowing how inconsistent the class can be. So whether that holds him in good stead second half of the season, some of his other contenders start to turn the wick up a bit. For now, it's doing a job for him and I think he'll just keep doing that. Whether he can, not, he can win another race this season i'm not too sure but we'll see now we're sticking in moto 2 here his title rival celestino vietti is at number six the few dnfs he's had hasn't helped but look another positive ish result in assen sees him retain his lead in the world championship on countback so he is leading the world championship and he's largely being very impressive most of the impressive work he was doing was earlier in the season i don't know if everyone else hadn't quite got to grips with the season yet or if it was just he was better than everyone else at that point i still have him ahead of ayagura uh but i do not have him ahead of our fifth place man who is uh is augusto fernandez and really impressed since spain i think he had a decent finish and then went on to win in le mans 
and since then has taken two more victories and another podium, I think. So uh, he's the guy to beat right now. Only losing the championship on Countback, like I just mentioned. Very impressed. And he is coming. And he's looking every bit a world champion at the moment, I think. Uh, would be my favorite from here on out. He was my favorite at the start of the season, just. And starting to show why a lot of people were thinking that. When you're on one of them, Akiyo, KTM, whatever's, you're always going to be a chance to win races and be at the front, and they expect to win world championships. And he certainly is delivering in the last few weeks. Okay, this is where it gets juicy. This is where the next four guys are all guys that I've actually had a fair bit of trouble deciding where to place them this week. It's actually genuinely difficult. <sighs> Could drive a man to drink coming up with this shit. At number four, and this is going to sound low considering the performance. He just put in at Assen. A real, I don't want to say coming of age, but almost career-defining and championship-defining ride if things go his way, Aleish Espargaro. Big fan of Aleish, and I have been for a while, and I had a feeling a season like this would be on the cards if he could get the bike. And he was amazing in Assen. Stunning ride. We all saw it. I don't need to go over it play-by-play play for you, but the pass into the last corner. <laughs> Ooh, why isn't he higher? after that well because the guy three guys that i've got ahead of him found it even more harsh to demote them if that makes sense so he was fourth going into us and he's still fourth now in the rob gp power rankings which is all that matters and my opinion is correct so shut up number three down a place although another incredible comeback ride just like Alicia's Sergio Garcia I just thought he was nowhere all day it was nowhere all weekend it was nowhere all weekend it was nowhere all day and then I'm watching this race there's big groups and whatever packs he latches on to the league group and all of a sudden they cross the line he was third I had no fucking idea where he came from the reason he's not first is potentially controversial because he's had a top ride there but he's without a win in three races now although he has podium twice in those two races and he still leads the world championship by three points but for me all the form and all the power and all the glory at the moment is with Isan Guevara his championship rival three points behind now and he's come out of nowhere I mean here's his last since Hareth he's gone first third second first first second full power that is full power Isan Guevara up one place to number two and normally, it's always difficult to, you know, because I base it on form and championship position when I do these. It's always difficult to be like, well, he's behind him in the championship. How can he? Well, the form is undeniable here. You want power? You want power rankings? There it is. <sighs> Number one, despite quite a ridiculous attempt to go past Aleish uh, at Assen and took himself out, took Aleish out. Aleish, like we mentioned, recovered. Fabio Quattararo still leads my power rankings just because of his commanding position in the championship. And aside from that one mistake, since Portugal, I want to say? Let's have a look. Seventh in the US, before that didn't have much of a run. First in Portugal, first, second, fourth, second, first, first, and then a DNF, which was his own making. But man, like that's ridiculous. And to do it in MotoGP, obviously gives you an advantage over the other classes in the power rankings. Because top dogs in it i've kept him at number one look you're leading the MotoGP world championship other than one mistake your form's been undeniable i mean i wanted to move a up i wanted to move you know guevara sergio garcia up it's just not going to happen with off, off the back of one mistake and one dnf for fabio so he's still at number one so as we go to silverstone 2022 mid-season break power rankings that is how they stand ladies and gentlemen they're on the screen for you now all the ups and downs how many positions they moved from last week now, as I mentioned, I'm going to show you how we got to this point. So I'm gonna play a little graphic now. It's gonna be from round one to round 11, the top 10 as they stood at the end of each round till now. Enjoy. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you have stayed around till after that little clip show I've just played, thank you. I really appreciate people watching the video. I don't really do this that much anymore. I thank you for watching the video and ask you to subscribe and like and all that shit. Because generally, I just don't think if you ask people, they just don't do it anyway. If you want to subscribe, you'll subscribe, right? But I would like to say that after Silverstone, I am planning 
very special video my biggest kind of project i've put together today got to put a lot of effort into it for you guys so if you want to see that video when it comes out plus if i decide to do anything before then maybe maybe not who knows you better i'll keep you on your toes if you don't subscribe you'll never know and of course if you don't agree with my power rankings which is entirely possible because what the fuck do i know i'm talking a lot of shit here let me know what your top 10 is to this point of the season because i think that would be very interesting to see what everybody thinks of the season and just to see how different our opinions can be and what do you value as power, full power for rider rankings across all three classes for a season. Maybe you only watch MotoGP. Tell me your top 10. Is it just championship order? I don't know. How does it work if you only do one class? That's why I do all three because otherwise it's kind of boring. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one.